there, it's Mrs. Drake with the clarinet. We are going to be doing Book 2, Lesson 3. Book 2, Lesson 3. I hope you've already warmed up with your scales and all that. Okay, so let's take a look at Lesson 3. The new thing on Lesson 3 is the rhythm of 4 16th notes. So take a look, 4 16th notes in a row. Notice it has the double beam there. So 4 of them fit in one beat. 4 of them fit in one beat. And my nickname for them is Ticka Ticka. Ticka Ticka. And if you're using numbers, it's one eanda. One eanda. So the nickname is Ticka Ticka. Four of them fit in one beat. So you got to think of the relationship. And on the other pages we were using Grasshopper. You could also think of it as Hopper Hopper. But anyways, four of them fit in one beat. So you've got to think of the speed of the relationship. So if you want the Ta's to be Ta, 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 the eighth notes would have to be T, 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 and the sixteenth notes would have to be ticka, 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 ticka. So that's the relationship. Ta to T, T to ticka, ticka. Quarter note to eighth notes to sixteenth notes. Um, okay, so on number one, notice it's a bunch of G's, and you can certainly play it if you want, but I'm just going to, on number one, I'm not going to play my clarinet, I'm just going to say the nicknames, just so you can get used to the speed of the eighth notes compared to the quarter notes and the sixteenth notes. So if you want to play your clarinet, go ahead. Um, otherwise, listen to me chant it, and maybe even chant it along with me. So the speed I'm going to go is ti ti ta ticka ticka ta Okay, this is song one. Ready, go. Ti ti ta, ticka ticka ta, ti ti ta, ticka ticka ta, ti 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 ti, ticka 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 ticka, ti ti ta, ticka ticka ta. So um, that would be the, the, your tongue has to go that fast. So let's move on to song two, and I am going to play this on the clarinet. Ticka ticka ti ti, ticka ticka ti ti. That's going to be the speed of your tongue. If that's too fast for you, you might want to just listen to me play it. You might want to turn off the video and try it on your own. Try it at a slower speed. But of course, eventually, I hope you can play it with me. Okay, so song number two. It starts on a C, so everybody warm up some C's. Ticka, ticka, ti, ti, song two. Ticka, ticka, ti, Song three. T T ticka ticka T T ticka ticka. That's the speed I'm gonna be going. Song three, warm up at E. Ready go. Song four. Back to grasshoppers. Look through it. Do you remember grasshopper? And I know in song four they have the dots over the notes. For elementary school, ignore the dots. It's staccato where you're supposed to play it extra short. Let's just ignore those dots, okay, everybody? Song four is hard enough as it is. Okay, so take a look. Song four starts on high A. High A. And I want to remind you of the finger position on high A. Two fingers on the front. Thumb covering the hole and touching the register key. High A should sound like this. Everybody try warming up a high A. In fact, if you haven't done it yet, I hope you do it as part of your warm up. Do you remember the clarinet low finger tester and high finger tester? I'm going to play them. There's a separate video for those if you don't remember how to do it, but this is the low finger tester. And this is the high finger tester. Warm those up if you haven't had a chance to do it. Go ahead and warm those up. Okay, remember, have those as part of your warm up when you first get your clarinet out. Song four is quite challenging, quite challenging. Again, it starts off on high A. Look through it. You are going to need your um, C, your red for the C. Uh, so song four, um, hopper grass, hopper grass. Everybody warm up the high A again. 
Okay, song four. Ready, go. <laughs> Challenging song, challenging song. Okay, um, and if it's squeaking, if you have small fingers, just try to keep going. I hope you know the fingers, you know what the positions are, but if your tone isn't beautiful, just keep going. Don't worry, your hands will eventually grow. Okay, song number five. This one has some accents in it in the second measure, those arrows. That means to flick your tongue a little harder, make it come out a little bit louder. But again, that's icing on the cake. Just try to get your fingers right. Try to get the rhythms right. Scan over song five. Notice it has grass, hopper, hopper, grass. This one also has some bees. So you're going to have to use your green, your left pinky for the bees. Again, by now you should know your notes. You should know which ones are which. Um, if you don't, please study them and get, in, get them figured out. Song number five. I don't expect your tone to be beautiful if you have small hands, but I do expect you to know the letter names, and I expect you to know the finger positions. Okay, song number five starts on a high E. Everybody warm up a high E. Grass, hopper, hopper, grass, ti, ti, ta. Song five, everybody. Ready, go. A famous melody, maybe you even recognized it. Okay, flip to the next page. Hey, song six. Song six has a bunch of slurs. If you've never played song six before, you might want to do it without the slurs first. You might want to get it without the slurs first. Um, check the key signature, all naturals. So I hope you realize that means the B's, the low B's are going to be middle finger. The low B's are going to be middle finger. If you don't think you're going to remember, feel free to circle them or draw a natural sign. Do something to help yourself remember that the B's are going to be middle finger. Um, take a look, at, starting at measure 9, it has divisi. Starting at measure 9, it has divisi. You have your choice of playing a high note or playing a low note. Okay, so I am going to um, play the low note. I'm going to play the low note. Um, notice that in measure 9, even though the notes are the same, e, 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 it has a slur mark under it. I am actually going to cross off that slur mark. Feel free to cross off that slur note, a slur mark. I feel it's inappropriate at elementary school level to put slurs where the note is the um, the same letter. Okay, so I'm I removed that slur. Um, anyways, so starting at measure nine, I'm going to play the bottom notes. The top note is an octave higher, meaning in in this situation, if the low note is an E, the high note is also an E. Of course, different finger position, and um, so I encourage you to try the low notes with me, but also rewind the video and you try the high notes while I'm playing the low notes, um, and they should it should sound beautiful together. Okay, song number six. I'm going to be doing all the slurs. Remember, for you, slurs are optional. And when we get to the divisi, I'm going to play the low note. You can play the low note with me, or I encourage you um, to try the high notes too. Okay, song number six. Warm up the first measure. Song six, Aura Lee. One, two, ready, go. song. 
Um, notice that some of the slurs, like on the divisi part, if the slur is underneath the music, it means it goes for the high notes too. And the reverse, if the slur is on the top on the high notes, it means it also you should be slurring the bottom notes too. So um, slurs are for both parts when it's written as a divisi. Okay, song seven, the boxer. Okay, on your music, it's a duet. So again, I encourage you to mark the staffs A, B, A, B, A, B. And you decide, I'm going to play the A staff and then I'm going to play the B staff. So you can decide, do you want to play with me or do you want to play the opposite part, which would create a duet. Okay, so take a look at this key signature. B flats and E flats, okay? So on the A staffs, B flats, okay? There's an F sharp over there. B flats. Do you remember how to play E flat? I'll talk about that in a few seconds. It's with the side key. And again, feel free to mark little memos to yourself. On this one, don't worry about the staccatos. I know they drew in the staccato markings, those dots. Just ignore it. B staff. Again, B, uh, B flats and E flats. Hey, look at that one. Low F sharp. I don't remember if we've ever done low F sharp before, but I'm going to tell you about how to play that. You might want to circle that. That's a note that we haven't used very often. B flat, so it's going to be first finger B flats. There's an E flat there, so again, feel free to mark in your music these reminders so you don't play a wrong note. Okay, so let's talk about some of the finger positions. Of course, uh, high B flat is first finger and thumb. High B flat is used a lot in this song. Low B flat is first finger, low B flats. E flat. Okay, so you put your fingers on D, and then remember you touch the side key. So E flat is like D with the side key. Let's everybody warm up an E flat. D in the side key. Okay, and now let's talk about that. Oh, regular F sharp is first finger, no thumb. But then if you're playing the B staff, you have some low F sharps. Okay. So low F sharp, three fingers on the top hand, three fingers on the bottom hand. And then your left pinky, you know how you have the green one up here? It's the one next to it. And I put a blue piece of tape on that one. That creates low F sharp. So not the one that you use to play low E, the, you know, the one that have, has the green. The one next to it, the one that has the blue. So let me show you here so you can see it a little bit better. It's that one, and it activates that key down on the bottom of your clarinet. Okay, so I'm going to play a G, and then I'm going to slur to an F sharp. Everybody try that. That's what it's supposed to sound like. That'll help you if uh, know if you're hitting the right key or not. G to F sharp. Try it. Okay, so the F-sharp is used in measure 3, and then on the bottom of the page on measure 10. So remember, you might want to circle that or something, and that's going to be that blue pinky. So this is a challenging song. Okay, I'm going to do all the slurs. Remember, slurs are icing on the cake. If you want to leave off the slurs the first times, it's okay with me. I'm going to start by playing the A staff. So decide, are you going to play the A staff with me, or are you going to play the B staff and create a duet? Everybody warm up the first couple notes. <laughs> I'm going to lead it off with one, two, three, because it's a pickup note. Get, every, get ready, everybody. One, two, three. Challenging song, challenging song. Okay, now I'm going to play the B staff. Decide whether you're going to play the B staff with me or do you want to play the A staff and we'll do a duet. 
Grab a quick little drink of water. Okay, everybody warm up the first few notes. Okay, I'm going to lead it off with one, two, three. One, two, three. Um, the boxer and I want to remind you that the last song on every lesson there is a recording an audio track that I sent to you before that has a band playing that song so on every lesson the last song of every lesson you could um, turn that audio track on that I sent you and play along with it because it has drums and trumpets and clarinets and all the different band instruments playing along with you okay that was lesson three <laughs>